Welcome to the College Football Survivor Show, where playoff survival is always on the line. Here are your co-hosts, Doug Maurice and Shahan Jeharaja. Back on the College Football Survivor Show, Doug and Shahan making bets, and this is dangerous territory, Shahan. I have said, now listen, I'm not, I'm not much of a gambling man because I'm a terrible gambling man. And when you're a sports writer... Um, I mean, like you can't, you can't be betting on stuff that you're involved in and you can't be, you know, like, it's like, you, you kind of just, um, you just avoid it most of the time. But there was a time in my life where I said, well, if, if I had been like, not afraid to have a bookie, I might've gotten my knees nailed to the, to a floor. Right. That I mean, like, I think, I think I might have that in me if I allowed it to happen and I have never allowed it to come close to happening. Um, but do you have do you have the gambling uh, Jones inside of you? Do you get a percolating when you think about putting money on sports? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I I think that I have like a kind of addictive personality. So I've been like afraid to get into that world because I don't want to like get into that world too much. Uh, and, and of course, sports betting is illegal. I would never do it in the state of Texas where we have normal laws. Uh, but uh, but no, I mean. I, I do like to do it from like the uh, the theory perspective, but like I am so afraid of losing money. Like I am, uh, I'm like, man, I only make sports writer money. Like it's, uh, I, I don't have a whole lot to just throw out the window. So fake gambling is the best kind of gambling for us then, because it's, the it's not our money in the line. It's just our reputations. And you can buy a new one of those. I mean, and I can't I can't stomp on my own reputation any more than I already have so far in my career. So what we're going to do is we're giving ourselves a thousand fake dollars. But by the way, a lot of people listening, you can bet. You can't yet. I am in Ohio. You can't yet in Ohio. But January 1st, it's going to be legal. So it's like they're missing this football season. But by the playoff, we'll be able to do it. Maybe by the time that Texas is back, you can bet on them. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, yeah. No. Right. When Texas is playoff team. It, it'll uh, it'll take a while to get legal down here, I think. That'll be the thing. That's what they should do. Say te- sports betting will become legal in Texas as soon as Texas wins 10 games. Oh, boy. <laughs> they better hurry and do it before they get to the SEC because I don't know. Oh, maybe they'll extend the season to 16 games and then Texas will have a chance to win 10 games. So uh, we will have a Texas discussion later. So we. Oh, no. We, oh, no, is right. We have a thousand fake dollars to play with. We've used two sites. One is the Caesars Palace uh, site, which is very operational. It's actually directs you to WilliamHill.com. They're like the guys in England. Man, I was in the at the covering the Olympics in England in 2012. And you can just like you just like walk in off the street and you like write something on a notepad. You know, you write in like, uh, you know, 10 pounds on this guy to win a gold in judo and you hand it to somebody behind the counter and they're like, yeah, that's cool. OK, here. I'm like, that's your <laughs> ticket. It is like it really is. I'm like, I, it made me think, like, if I don't win this bet, are you going to nail my kneecaps to a floor somewhere? <laughs> so it's it can be so easy. But this William Hill um, sports book that we used online is very operational. They have uh, a lot of over under win totals, which is a lot of where a lot of my bets. They have odds to win conference championships. They have national title odds. And then we want to do a little Heisman stuff. So on FanDuel, they have a lot of odds on teams to win at least 10 games. They also have over unders. They have conference winners, division winners within conferences, national championship odds, but they also have some Heisman odds. So I made a couple Heisman bets based off their odds, Shahan. So it's nice. Yeah. You know, kind of have a mix of things that we can uh, try to think about. There wasn't everything that I wanted using those two sites. There wasn't every single bet in the world, but that was, I thought it was pretty comprehensive what our options were. Yeah, no, we had a lot and I don't know. Uh, because again, the the Caesars one is the one that we normally use over at CBS Sports. And like, sometimes you just log on and you're like, where are things? Like, I just opened it today and actually they've had highs and winners the whole time and I just didn't even notice. So I listen, as long as we got the numbers, this is all fake money anyway, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, it's all fake money anyway. So let's start with, I'm going to start with my biggest bet. I have a $200 bet with my $1,000 bankroll. That is my biggest bet. And this is an over under win total on a team that I I think is just going to be a team that I'm going to believe in this year. I have I have maybe like two or three that I think are going to be the case on my other podcast, uh, Buckeye Talk. We actually had done some things like this with some bets a year ago. My big thing a year ago was going under on Clemson and Bama 
uh, either under 11 or under 11 and a half for their regular season win totals. Cause I just thought neither of them were going to get through undefeated. And so like I hit on both of those. So it was just like, I just didn't feel that with those teams last year. And some of these, these great teams, Shahan, when you're doing a 12 day regular season and the over under win total, the over under is 11 or 11 and a half. So you're just betting undefeated regular season or not. When you're talking about the two or three best teams in the country, I'm taking Clemson over 10 and a half wins. That's the line on Caesars over 10 and a half for $200. It's minus 125. So betting $200, I'll win 360. And the reason I like that is of their 12 games, I think there's nine that you look at them and say, ah, they, they really should probably win those games. And then you have Notre Dame, North Carolina State and Miami. So they have to win two of those three and go 11 and one for me to win my bet. And I don't even have to like, I didn't bet on them to win the ACC. Cause there's like a world where if North Carolina state is the game that Clemson loses and North Carolina state runs the table, Clemson could be an 11 win team that doesn't make the ACC championship game. And so this bet is just about Clemson. I don't have to worry about what NC state does. Cause they could lose to NC state and still win me my money. I just think Clemson's going to be good. And a year ago, they were either 11 or 11 and a half. I think they're at 10 and a half because last season got a little hairy because they lost their two coordinators because there's some questions about DJ Uyunglele at quarterback. But I think with Cade Klubnick, they can solve that if there are major questions. I think they are very easily going to get off to a hot start before the NC State game. So this was the bet I liked the most, 200 bucks on Clemson over 10 and a half. So I think that Clemson is going to be much more back to normal this year for sure. I'm not super worried about Clemson's long-term trajectory, but the one thing I don't like about it is that it's a little bit of a tricky schedule because you mentioned it. Obviously you have those three big games that I think will stand above all the rest. Uh, and the good news is that they get most of their tricky games at home, but they go at Wake Forest versus North Carolina state at Florida state, I think is going to be a big game for Florida state at Notre Dame is a game that I'm definitely worried about. Uh, and then Louisville, I, I, I think is actually a game that, uh, that could get a little chaotic of Malik Cunningham's rolling. Uh, and then you mentioned Miami and South Carolina in the last two weeks. So, Oh, so now you believe in South Carolina. Now my 10 and a half Clemson. Now you're warning me of Spencer Rattler. I'm warning you that it could be one of I think that South Carolina deserves to be in the Louisville conversation, which is to say as a team that could accidentally do something. Now, that's a rivalry game. So Clemson is going to win that game. Uh, but <laughs> a team that could accidentally do something. That is a great category. I feel like as we discuss teams, that is a category. I think that South Carolina has a lot in common with Nathan Peterman Pitts. I think that they could be Syracuse someday, maybe. So, uh, but, but all that to say, there's just a lot of potholes on the schedule, like more than usual, I think. And so that's what would worry me. I, I think it's probably 10 and two. I think it's probably still, they're really good and win 10 games. And again, I think that anybody should consider 10 and two relatively back to normal, but at Notre Dame as a non-conference game is a lot. And uh, again, luckily they get a lot of these big games at home, which I think will help out a lot. But even at BC, I think could be a pretty uh, tricky game with Phil Djokovic back. So uh, just a few too many. I, I don't know if I'm buying into that one. So this is, again, this is a team that has been a playoff regular. And frankly, 10 and 2, I would say, is not back to normal for Clemson. Normal for Clemson is making the playoff and 10 and 2 is not making the playoff. So... Is your the way you just described that is your biggest question about this bet that the ACC is better than it has been or that you have real questions about Clemson returning to their previous status? A, a little of this, a little of that. I, I think that, you know, one thing that I've seen, you know, just kind of across college football, I guess you could say, is when there's a dominant team in different conferences, right, when there's like a truly dominant team. You know, the Pac-12 can look real weak and the ACC can look real weak because a dominant team can go through those things. But once you get to like 90 percent of a dominant team, well, mm. then all of a sudden you're at a level where you're susceptible to a lot of teams. Um, Clemson's going to be the best team in the league. I, I think that I would lean towards them winning the league next year. But uh, but I think that they're not 100 percent Clemson and 100 percent Clemson can blow through 
like the schedule, right? But I think if they're 90% Clemson and getting real close, but even if they have to, you know, have some quarterback questions or even if they switch to Kate Klubnick after the Wake Forest game or after the NC State game, uh, and there's just some growing pains, I, I think that I'm a little worried that uh, that there are just going to be a few too many questions to get through all of that unscathed. Okay. What's your big bet? My big bet is I am keeping it simple. It's also a $200 bet. Uh, it would net me $360, and it is Alabama winning the national championship. Wow. They bring back the best player in the country on offense, the best player in the country on defense, a whole lot of production. They added some key transfers at wide receiver, which was their big question mark last year. They added somebody who I think can contribute at left tackle. Uh, They, I think, will be more of a defensive team than we've seen in years past. Jameer Gibbs is going to have a chance to be an all-SEC running back. And to me... I don't even so they'll they'll play Georgia in the SEC championship game and Georgia's not going to be uh, bad, you know, but I I don't think that they're going to be national title level this year after everything that they've lost. And that's the first game that I even really feel like they could lose. And then uh, again, we've talked about it already all offseason. It's Alabama, Ohio State, in my opinion, on a collision course in the national championship game. And I like Alabama better right now. I think they're a more balanced team. I think that they have a better quarterback personally. Uh, You you know, obviously, Ohio State has a lot of pieces to make that competitive. But I think that Alabama heading into the year uh, absolutely deserves to be the preseason number one. They absolutely deserve to be the favorites. Uh, One thing that I will mention is that uh, there was a there was a very funny bet, which is um, which is hold on, I'm pulling it up on on uh, Caesars. It's champion versus field. Any other team wins the 2023 championship or Georgia, Alabama, or Ohio State wins it. The Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama one is minus 345, which (laughs) so like if you bet on anybody other than those three teams to win the national championship at $100, you only get 270 back. Like it's kind of crazy, right? Um or you get 270 back, which is kind of crazy. And so, uh, I, I, you know, I think that that shows how dominant these teams are. I don't think Georgia is going to be quite that this year, but I understand why they're in that conversation. I just think Alabama is the best team in the field by a pretty sizable margin, and they have plenty of time to prove it. And you think, so that's plus 180 when you just look at the, at the Caesars book. Bama's plus 180, so that's a little less than two to one, which is why you'll win $360 in a $200 bet. Ohio State's plus 375, Georgia four to one, and then a big jump, Clemson 14 to one, USC 25 to one, Texas A&M 25 to one. You think those are good enough odds on Bama to like make it worth the bet, right? That you're getting almost two to one, and my goodness, it's a pretty darn good Saban team with arguably the two best players in the country. That's worth plopping 200 on. Yeah, I mean, I think to me, it's it's basically, uh, you know, again, something will happen, something always happens. But to me, it's a two team race, right? So if I'm doing the math in my head, I think it's almost it's not going to work like this, because that's not how gambling and, and odds works. But it's almost like if you gave Alabama and Ohio State 50 50 odds, that's what I kind of am thinking in my head as the uh, as the potential way to go right so if you had given me even odds i don't think that's a bad bet if you're giving me plus odds by nearly two to one like you mentioned i i just think that there's a lot of value there and i think that alabama is going to potentially be a lot better than everybody else all right so i'm going to stay with a national title bet then because i do have one of those and it's also clemson and i'm going to take clemson at 14 to 1 for 50 bucks if it hits i win 750 dollars It's just that, again, Clemson has been in the lead pack and they had one weird year where their quarterback was off. And now there's three clear teams and then a huge gap to them. So I feel like if they are close to what they have been in the past, then 14 to one odds is really, really good. I think they're going to be. And maybe I guess maybe Bama's right there, probably. And George is not far behind. But I really do think Clemson very likely will have the best defense in the country. I think their running backs are good. And I think there's a chance that quarterback works out. And I think it's possible that quarterback works out really well because they have two talented guys and either DJ gets it back together or Cade is ready. And then that solves a 
big glaring hole. They also had some injury issues last year. I just think I like the value of Clemson at 14 to one when I don't know what the odds were in years past, but I'm sure they weren't much more than ever four to one for Clemson before the season, the previous five years, because they're Clemson, man. So that's a $50 value bet to win 750 on Clemson. Did you, did you make any other national title bets or did you just like, like throw a flyer at anybody or you just stuck with Bama? No, I just stuck with Bama. I just think it's a it's a two team race this year, and um and so you know I, I think that there's some value on Ohio State, but to me that's almost hedging, right? Like that's almost just hedging to bet uh, Ohio State, and I don't really feel the need to do that. And you know, I look fourteen to one. I think, like you said, is great odds for Clemson. My question with them getting to that level is just ultimately you know, when they've won twice, right, they've had two transcendent college football quarterbacks, like transcendent. And one was who a true freshman, one who was a true freshman. Yes, yes. One who was a true freshman for sure. And and maybe Kate Klubnik is that guy, right? Like, I mean, he is a right. really good player. But, uh, you know, look, I'm not going to I'm not going to read too much into my having some knowledge of Texas high school football. I don't view Kate Klubnik as that same kind of number one quarterback recruit as Trevor Lawrence or as Quinn Ewers, to be honest. Um, so, you know, but he's going to be great. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's a plug and play situation uh, like with Trevor Lawrence. Um, but, you know, I it's not again with the odds that you get. I don't think that's a bad bet at all. I, I think that there's definitely a shot, but uh, it's I, I probably just can't see another team breaking into that top two group. Okay. So no more national title bets for you. No more, no more. Do you have any, did you make any conference champ bets? So let me, let me actually move. Cause you stick stuck with Clemson uh, for your first two bets. I'm sticking with Alabama for my first two bets. Okay. Okay. I think that there is going to be a lot of fervor for Will Anderson to win the Heisman trophy. I think that after last year, everybody was talking like, can you believe Will Anderson did make, which by the way, all this talk started happening after, uh, you know, the Heisman stuff was announced, right? This wasn't happening before, but it is so rare that a transcendent defensive player returns in college football, right? I mean, Aiden Hutchinson kind of comes out of nowhere last year. If he comes back for another year, right, we're talking about him as a Heisman favorite. When you look at the odds right now for Will Anderson to win the Heisman Trophy, plus 4,000 right now at Caesars. So I only bet $50 on it, but I would get a $2,000 payout. 40 to 1. 40 to 1. 40 to 1. And I think that there's a huge appetite for a defender to win the award in general. I think that uh, that Alabama, like I mentioned, I expect them to be the best team in the country and to win the national championship. And if they do that, uh, Bryce Young will have to exceed what he did last season in order to win it again. And this will be an Alabama team that I believe will be more defense first than there has been in a couple of years. And so if it is a really good defense, like a top five type defense uh, that manages to really suffocate teams, not to the level of Georgia last year, but not in a dissimilar way. And Will Anderson has another year with close to 15 sacks. I think that there's going to be a lot of excitement because because here's the thing when it comes to Alabama and when it comes to them being this good is like it really does depend on the narrative, right? It depends on what narrative comes about because you can pick any number of players, right? I mean, I think that you can obviously make a case for Jameer Gibbs again. I think Jermaine Burton's going to have a huge year for them at wide receiver. I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be a 1500 yard rusher for them as well. But if the narrative gets centered around, well, Will, Will Anderson got snubbed last year and he's the best player in college football, which is again, something that people said after we resolved all of this, I think that he has a chance to be the first defensive player to win the Heisman since what Desmond Howard, I, I think it was. Yeah. This is Charles Woodson. Since Charles, Woodson. Charles Woodson. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. The other Michigan guy. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, I've made, I made that case on this podcast like f- four months ago or whatever, when we, we did some really early Heisman picks. And I also have that. I also have that 50 bucks, 40 to one for Will Anderson. The only problem is if you, if guys like you and I keep talking about this, we're going to drive the odds down. Before the season starts. <laughs> yeah, but we're betting now. We're betting now. It's fine. No, we're, we're getting in now. You got to get in while there's while there's still value on this, because at some point it's like you can't bet on a Heisman. You can't bet on a defensive guy to win the Heisman before the season, like 10 to one. That won't make any sense. It's you've got to get value on this. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, right? Because I was shocked to see that he's still this low. I feel like the narrative has started to take over it. Now, 
to be clear too right like we live in a in an online twitter world sometimes and so us talking about a thing doesn't necessarily shape reality all the time but i do think that it has an, a disproportionate effect on what media talks about and what people are thinking about in a given moment so you know i think that if we head into next year and uh, there's all this talk about wow yeah i mean they tried to do it with jordan davis right like i i think that if georgia wins the sec championship game even though jordan davis we've we've obviously talked about him greatly i don't think that he was as important as people said he was during the season i think that that narrative is going to happen a lot more for will anderson and i think that he's going to be able to back it up in a much bigger way so i a thousand percent agree with this and and he's going to be who i actually pick to win the heisman mm. when we do whatever i'm doing it whether i'm writing it whether i'm talking about it on this podcast or another podcast it's like hey who do you think is going to win the heisman last year i picked sam howell yeah that was that was wrong <laughs> I'm going to pick Will Anderson because I buy everything you said. We've talked about it a lot. I think at 40 to one, he's still a really good value. And I have another Heisman bet. So I gave myself two Heisman bets. And I've also talked about this, but I think the pathway for Jackson Smith and Jigba, there's a path. What's the path? Thought very hard about him. Like the best season a receiver's ever had statistically for a national title contender. That's the path. He's 50 to one. So I'm putting 50 bucks on him to win 5,000. So I'll, I'll throw 50 bucks at each of these guys. Will Anderson at 40 to one, Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio state at 50 to one. It is a quarterback award, but the one quarterback already won it. And I think that makes it harder for him to win it this time with Bryce young and CJ Stroud, whether it's fair or not, I think it's possible that some voters may say, yeah, man, he's great. And he put up huge numbers, but he has such great weapons there and they might go to the weapon. And Jackson Smith and Jigba had such a huge year last year. If he has 2,000 receiving yards in the 13 games before the Heisman is voted on, I, I really think the voting populace may go to him, may go to him instead of the quarterback. And that's the thing that you've got to wrap your head around in these situations where, OK, well, why would you vote for the receiver instead of the quarterback? Why do they vote for Devontae Smith instead of Mac Jones? Listen, CJ Stroud was already a Heisman finalist. He has a much bigger profile than Mac Jones. But I think, again, fair or not, and actually it's unfair, but he had Jackson Smith and Jigba plus Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave last year when he put up all these huge numbers. And if it's just like, man, Jackson Smith and Jigba, he's the best college receiver I've ever seen. I'm not saying that he is, mm -hmm. but that's the path. So I like it at 50 to one. And you said you thought about it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think that the thing that works in his favor is that, uh, you know, this is an unfair reading. I want to be clear of uh, of what I'm saying. But I think that last year, you know, Ohio State had arguably the three best receivers in the entire country. And if they didn't, it's because one of them left from Ohio State to go to Alabama. Um, and like, in my mind, and again, it's unfair it felt like they were like, oh, wow, they got all these great receivers. Who do we give it to? Why don't we give it as a team award to CJ Stroud, right? I think that that very much is what happened. Um, this year, I think that there is going to be a dominant guy, right? There's going to be one guy that you point to and say, that is the best receiver. There's no question about it. Could have done that last year, I think, uh, with Garrett Wilson, but, you know, they didn't. And so I think that um, that heading into this year, he's got the hype. He just what, put, put together the best receiving season in the history of the Big Ten, right? And um, so the, the hype's going to be there. He's been a first-team All-American. He's going to be not just the favorite to win the Bolitnikoff, but I think the overwhelming favorite to win the Bolitnikoff. And, and so I think if he has a chance to come in and put up huge numbers, there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to be in the conversation. And the other thing I'll mention, too, is that I think that uh, that it – with the receiver as well, you made this point before. If you have a week where you have two catches for 70 yards, you can make up for it if you're a receiver in a different way than if you're a quarterback. And so I think that there's a pathway there. We've obviously seen he's can have the transcendent type games like he had against Utah in the Rose Bowl. I mean, obviously you don't expect somebody to have whatever, 350 yards or whatever it was again. But, uh, you know, if he has a 250 yard game against anybody, right, it doesn't even matter, much less in a big game. I absolutely think that he's going to be in the conversation to uh, to join Devontae Smith as recent wide receiver Heisman winners. Garrett Wilson missed two games for Ohio State last year. He opted out of the Rose Bowl and he missed the Nebraska game because he was hurt. In those two games, Jackson Smith and Jigba had 547 receiving yards. <laughs> Seems good. So listen, they have other really good receivers, including Marvin Harrison Jr., who a lot of people think is going to pop this year. But like when he's the guy... And he's the guy. He's the guy. So, um, okay. Do you want to come along 
You said you thought about it. And you also said maybe you weren't up against the $1,000 threshold. You want a little $50 nibble on this? Come on, man. All right, we'll all right. Let's do, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's put another 50 on uh, on JSN. So I like, I mean, I like those little nibbles because the Heisman is always, you think you know going into the year. Oh, well, yeah, no, it's going to be this. And the Heisman is often nuts, often has a guy out of nowhere. So if I put 50, that's 2,500 payout, right? That's That's what we're looking at. No, we're looking at uh we're looking at uh it's f- oh, is that right? 50 to 1 on on $50 is 2500, right? That's what we'd be paying out. No, we're paying out we're paying out oh wait. See now this is bad. <laughs> Not math. Podcasting. No, but what are we paying out on Will Anderson at 40 to 1? I I had 2000 down for that. Okay. Right. So that's 2000 and then 2500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Like, we'll take that. We'll take that. That's that's right? great value. That's great value. Yeah. So we I so. OK, so we feel good about any other Heisman things for you. No, no. I mean, I, I think that there's some value, but like it's just the top of the board is so obvious. And I think that it's it's almost too obvious. Right. Like people are going to be clamoring for Caleb Williams to win the Heisman. People are going to be clamoring for Tyler Van Dyke at Miami. I think they have to have playoff seasons in order for that to happen. And I don't know that I see that, uh, you know, and, and again, if if you want to put money on Stroud or young, you know, it's a good bet. Yeah. But like, it's, uh, that's boring. I don't, don't want to do that. 40 to 50. You want to, yeah, we're going to win 2000 or 2,500 on this. Okay. Um, what else is uh, uh, everything else for me is mostly over unders. So what uh, do you have anything else left? that's not like an over under win total. Uh, no, actually, because, you know, it was funny. I really wanted to to do a championship odds, but I just didn't feel like there's a lot of value. I, I, I expected to have a little more value than there was. All right. I did a crazy one. OK, OK. I like it. One crazy uh, championship odds. And it was, it was a little bit because I couldn't find a way to bet on this team. Otherwise, the site that has the site that has win more than 10 games this team was not one of the options that I saw the uh, over unders. I didn't, I couldn't find them in the over under win totals for whatever reason. And it's BYU. Oh, I saw them. You did. I'm kind of in on BYU and I couldn't figure out how to vote on them. So I decided to bet on them. So I decided to bet um, $20 on them to win the national championship at 200 to one. So, (laughs) so I'll make that bet. And that's my that's my I, yeah. BYU bet. Like I'm all in. I'm all in on like they beat Baylor, they beat Notre Dame, they some they get in as the fourth spot, and then like Jaron Hall goes crazy, and they're super veteran. And oh my God, BYU won the national title. Yeah, you'll never get. Yeah, so I, I found it. They do have their uh, their odds on the site. Uh, you have to scroll down a little bit to be fair. Uh, guess what their over under is? Eight and a half. Seven and a half. That's insane to me. Can I wipe out all my previous bets and just bet $1,000 <laughs> on the BYU over? I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> it's crazy, wow. right? I don't, I don't understand what's happening there. Am I missing something? Like, the schedule is really hard. I want to be very clear about that. It is. It is, is hard. Insane. But, like, it's like, oh, man, can't believe they lost three games type hard. Not, like, six and six, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I just, I don't see the vision on that at all. Like every, every tough game, every game against a team with the pulse, they lose. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. No, they, they you know, maybe, maybe national title money. Maybe I'm throwing 20 bucks away. All right. Well, I couldn't find it. I even did the little search. I did the little like search. You have, you have to like scroll. Like it's, it's, that's I put in a, Brigham. Yeah. I put in BYU. Yeah, I put in yeah. young. I could, it wouldn't pop up. So, uh, I, all right. Knowing that I may shift one of my later bets on one of my over unders, but that's the last sort of like title or Heisman thing I have. So I'll still sort of throw 20 bucks on them at 200 to one. The rest of it, we're running through teams. Not, I feel a little bit bad. This is a playoff show. Not all my bets are like playoff level teams. Oh no, not at all. That's okay. We don't have to talk about only the playoff 24 hours a day, but we'll get back to all of this after this on the College Football Survivor Show. Don't miss the College Football Survivor Show bonus episode this week. Available only on Apple Podcasts. Most of what we like is the football. Most of what we like is the players. Most of what we like is the tradition. Most of what we like is the feeling on Saturday. Most of what we like is the fans. Most of what we like is the passion. Most of what we like is is how much people care about this sport and how 
that three hours on Saturday can be so exhilarating and satisfying and unifying, right? That we'll get into that. But it's July, so we're complaining. Our complaints are mostly structural. And I don't know if this is how everything works. Like, you like the thing, you dislike the logistics. But I think, man, in college football, boy, is there such a disparity between the two. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts for exclusive College Survivor Show bonus episodes. All right, Doug and Shahan back betting fake money. Uh, I have bet 200, 350, $370 so far. Shahan's bet 300. All right, why don't you give us one of your over under win totals that you really like? So this one is a combo. Um, they're, they're both related. I actually have another combo later on, too. Um, it is Kansas State. Ooh. $100 for them to go over seven wins, and that's at uh, minus 145, and $50 on them to go 10 wins, which is 40 to 1. So potentially with that one, if they got to 10 wins, we'd be talking about 2,000, uh, and over seven would still get you $69 regardless. So it's... Look, I, I the Big 12 teams came out today, the, the preseason all Big 12 team. Kansas State had the most selections on it with six. I would argue that uh, they have the most proven player on offense and defense in the Big 12 in Deuce Vaughn at running back and Felix Anaduke Uzoma on the defensive line. I, I feel like I'm missing something. I don't understand where the optimism is for them. And look, 10 is asking a lot. I think that I feel most comfortable with it being at nine. But if you're going to ask me to throw $50 down on the idea that maybe they could pull one more upset than I expect. I mean, this, this team has a chance to be really good. I know what it's just Kansas state wins all the games you expect them to win. Plus they beat Texas. Then you get your money, right? Is that your theory? I mean, you, you act like I, I didn't consider them to beat Texas already. <laughs> what, what are you talking oh, about? You already have the Kansas state. They, they get Texas at home on November 5th. You're not going to like my Texas bet. Uh, okay. So no, Kansas state, I, I like doubling down on that. Um, just, okay. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to wipe out one of my other picks. I am going to bet a okay. hundred bucks on BYU over seven and a half. Go for it. I, I still have a hundred dollars in free money, by the way, that I haven't allocated somewhere. So I'm, I'm looking for, for more. Okay. So, so you want to come along on BYU or do you have nah, BYU? Not yet. Not yet. I, it, it, I think the over is a good pick. Let, let me, I'll keep it in mind and maybe I'll throw it on at the end. Can I, can I tell you something? I am incredibly optimistic. I'm not an optimistic person. Ah, am I, am I optimistic? I'm both angry, but upbeat, I think. Well, am I optimistic? We'll have to talk about that later. I have all overs. I don't pick a single under because I just, hey, this guy, these, they're going to be good. And they're good. Like, what is wrong with us? I got to find an under. I, I, I got I to gotta pour some cold water on somebody. I'm not going to pick Texas. That's too obvious. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So, my, so BYU for, for, uh, over seven and a half wins for a hundred bucks. That's like my lock of the year, practically. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, all right, give us another over under for you then on somebody that you like. Well, I, I just did K State. You, you go now. All right, I'll go. Well, I just did BYU, but but I, but I'll do somebody besides BYU. Um, I'm gonna do uh, Michigan State over seven and a half. And a year ago, Michigan State's win total was like three or four or something. Like we were, there were people who thought they were going to finish last in the Big Ten East, and they won. Uh, 10 regular season games and they were great and they have a lot back. They have back, you know, Jalen Naylor might be, no, Jaden Reed, Jalen Naylor left, right? Jaden Reed is back. Jaden Reed probably is the second best receiver in the big 10. Peyton Thorne at quarterback might be the second best receiver, or second best quarterback in the big 10. Um, Mel Tucker's a defensive coach. I think you can believe that their defense, their past defense was awful last year. They have a bunch of transfers in to help with that. They have two transfers at running back to help replace, not be as good as Kenneth Walker the third, but I think their running game will still be pretty good. I think you look at their schedule, their non-conference schedule is not super tough. And so seven and a half, it's like, all right, lose to Ohio State, lose to Michigan, whatever. But like there's a it's still, I think, a, a very, very doable path to eight and four kind of only winning the games that are kind of right in front of them. So I just think there's, there's not a reason to think that Michigan state's, you know, going to fall off a cliff. The, the, the way they start, I think they have a chance to be five and O oh when they host Ohio state on October 8th. And then after that, they still have Illinois. They still have Rutgers. They still have Indiana. 
So, and then it's like, well, they also could beat, you know, a team like Penn State or Michigan or Wisconsin, you know, one of the decent teams they play. So I, I feel pretty good about it. Um, people really underestimated Michigan State last year, and I think they're still slightly underestimating Michigan State this year. So I'll go 100 bucks at minus 125 over seven and a half. I'll win 180 on that bet. Yeah, I, I looked at that number and was like, that feels crazy. Like, I, I definitely felt like I was going to go over, but man, they do get a tough draw this year because they're going to Penn State, to Michigan. They have Ohio State at home. They got Wisconsin from uh, from the West right now. They have to, I, I think that to Maryland is going to be kind of a tricky game. At Washington is kind of a tricky game. Like there's, again, I kind of sort of like what I said with Clemson. There's just like a lot of tripping up points. I think they get eight. I'm, I'm pretty sure they get eight. Like you said, maybe it's losing a bad one and winning a good one. But it is just so tight. Like that seven and a half, I think, is a really, really good line to set for Michigan State. All right. Who you got next? All right. I'm going to go with my other combo. I'm going to, of course, like I do, take it to the state of Texas and uh, UTSA and Houston parlay. What is this? That actually (laughs) sounds like a great idea. I might actually have to start a sports gambling to do that. But uh, no. So so you, you did get one half of it right. I think that Houston has a chance to be this year Cincinnati. Now, maybe not make the field, right? Maybe not make the field like Cincinnati did last year. I think it's going to be a little bit more competitive this year among the Power 5 teams. But I really like what Houston brings back. They've got a great track record of developing defensive talent. Uh, I know that there was uh, one of the one of the the draft guys was putting out like here are some of the guys that NFL teams like from the from the group of five. I know Javarius Owens at safety is a guy who a lot of people like. Donovan Mooton at linebacker. I think that another defensive lineman, and they've put two defensive linemen into the the first two rounds in the past couple of years. Uh, and by the way, Clayton Toon, their quarterback, won the Manning uh, Pass It Out Challenge at the Manning camp. Like, they are really good. I, I didn't even mention Tank Dell, who I think might be the best receiver in the group of five. It's a really strong group. And I think that they're going to have a chance to, to prove some of this early, right? They actually get UTSA in week one, which will be a fun game. I expect them to win that one pretty easily, but uh, but should be a fun game. They go to Texas Tech in week two. Uh, and I think that the AAC schedule is going to be pretty manageable. So I like what Houston is working with. I, I think that they have a chance to be pretty good. Uh, when you look at the odds, I, I think that um, their over-under is at nine. They're minus 125 on that. So that's $80. And then they also have plus 400 odds, uh, I believe, to go to 10 wins. And that's uh, that's 2000. So I like them a lot. Or actually, no, no, no. Wait, sorry. I think that that is uh, I, I believe that that's um, conference championship. They're plus 400. So actually, I do have one and it's 200. OK, so I, I mean, it is it's one of those things. It's, it's sometimes when you find a team that you really like, it's, like it's kind of hard to express necessarily like, well, I like them, but. If enough other people like them, then the odds on the thing I like aren't going to be that great anyway. But you just have like this is a a strong belief in Houston. That is it's not like nobody believes in Houston, but your belief is a little bit stronger, strong enough to make the odds worth. it. Yeah. And, and I was a little surprised. Right. I mean, I know uh, Cincinnati just just uh, won the whole thing and, and made the playoff last year. So they deserve all the respect in the world. But they're the favorite and they did lose a lot. Right. All of their kind of really key guys. Um, so I think that this could be a 10 and two year for Cincinnati. And, and guess what? Luke Fickle will live. He's not going to get fired. I think we'll be OK. Uh, and then UCF, I was a little surprised to see that they were favored over uh, Houston to win the uh, AAC. So I think getting them at the third best odds at, at four to one, that makes a lot of sense for me. And if you're going to toss uh, $50 some way, I, I like it there. OK, I'm going to bet the over on another team that is one that I haven't traditionally liked. And in the past, I've actually made fun of people who have believed in this team. Wisconsin? Uh, it is Wisconsin. Look at that. We, we, I did a, I did a podcast one time, like the year that people were picking Wisconsin to make the playoff. I made like national writers who had picked Wisconsin to make the playoff. And then they lost like three games in the first six or something. I made them come on my podcast and defend their ridiculous choice <laughs> of Wisconsin as a playoff team. But I think Wisconsin has a decently solid chance to go 11 and one in the regular season this year. They are going to be the team that I picked to win the big 10 West. They play at Ohio state on September 24th, but I think it's quite possible that like in the rest of their games, they're the better team. And so over nine wins 
Nine does not like the idea that I can push on nine and three and win on 10 and two for the team that is favored to win the big 10 West. I didn't bet on them to win the West. Cause it's like, again, I'll just bet on them to on their record. And then I don't have to worry if like, Oh, Iowa went crazy or Nebraska had this awesome season. I, I, I just think it's, it's what we've talked about a couple times of their defense is good. Jim Leonard as a defensive coordinator is great. I think Braylon Allen, is as good as any running back in the country. And I think I would lump Bijan Robinson and Trayvon Henderson in there. I don't think I'd give a caveat with Braylon Allen. I think he's as good as anybody. This is this is absolutely Deuce Vaughn erasure. I hate it. No, I, I, I Deuce Vaughn. But, well, like, I think there's a top group. I don't know that, like, Bijan's a monster, right? And Trayvon Henderson had a great true freshman year. But I don't know that those guys separate themselves from Deuce Vaughn or Braylon Allen or some of these other great running backs. If there are, I think maybe there's eight guys who are the top group. of. I'm sorry. Deuce is in the top group. But but other than that, I agree with you. And I just think, what and again, what if Graham Mertz is good? Like, what if Graham Mertz is decent? Oh, what if Graham yeah. Mertz is solid? How how do you go your whole career joking about Wisconsin quarterbacks? And then you see Graham Mertz and you're like, woo. Maybe this is the one. Because he was a top 100 recruit. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love recruiting. Oh my gosh. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, guess what? Sometimes guys then go play and go play college football and look bad. And sometimes they're bad at football. You're a hater. So I do think like, (laughs) like Graham Mertz has to be good Graham Mertz for them to go 11 and one. So they're not going 11 and one. But I think, I think even like, if he's kind of like, you're right on Graham Mertz. I think they can still go 10 and two and still at least go nine and three. And I push. So I'll bet a hundred bucks on over nine wins for Wisconsin. It's minus minus one fifteen. I went $186 on that bet. So I, again, I'm not usually on the Wisconsin bandwagon, but I am this year. Yeah. I mean, uh, as long as you don't have to include a, uh, a plus a Graham Mertz, all big 10 quarterback type bet along with it. I, I like the bets. I think that there are three obvious sort of losable games in there uh, with Ohio State, with uh, with Michigan State. And then I think that one of Iowa or Nebraska probably. And so that gives them a little bit of a cushion. Right. I think that it does. Uh, I feel pretty confident that they're not going to do worse than push. I don't think that you'd lose your money on this bet. Uh, so. So from that perspective, I think it's a good uh, it's good quality and um, and a good value rather. And so I absolutely think that they're going to win the West as well. I think that Braylon Allen is a difference maker for them. And uh, and I'm excited to see what he can do with the full season behind him. I, I'm really excited for that uh, Ohio State game. Maybe maybe it just ends up being an air raid and it's, uh, it doesn't matter. But uh, but, you know, maybe there's something there. I mean, it's one of those things I, I you know, I don't think Wisconsin is going to come into Ohio State on September 24th and beat Ohio State. But with a really good defense and a really good run game. And if Ohio state still doesn't, you know, have things straightened out at linebacker and I don't know, you know, that's, they got a, maybe a puncher's chance in the game like that, but I just think nine's a good number for them. All right. What's another one for you here, Sean? Yeah, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take it to the Atlantic coast, but not the conference. Uh, Am I missing something? Why is coastal Carolina's line eight? That, that feels crazy to me when they might have, a top five to 10 quarterback in the country coming back and grace in the call. They lose some key pieces. I want to be very clear about that. The, you know, this is not a flawless team, but at the same time, I mean, coastal Carolina has earned the right to be considered that kind of program that can reload, especially with grace and McCall still on campus. Again, their line is eight. Uh, they're minus minus one fifteen to do that. You win $87 on a hundred uh, on a $100 bet. Again, it, with some of these, I just feel like I'm missing something like that. There's like some obvious like, oh, yeah, by the way, Jamie Chadwell now lives on Mars or something like I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't understand why they haven't earned the right because like the favorite to win the Sun Belt, by the way, is Louisiana after Billy Napier left and they lost a whole lot of production, not to mention multiple players to Florida. So I don't understand uh, what I'm missing on them. And I think that the answer is maybe I'm not missing anything. And they actually just have a chance to be really good in the non-conference slate. They go to Virginia, which I think will be a great game that maybe they have the chance to win. And otherwise it's Buffalo Gardner Webb army. And the, they get a pretty weak Sunbelt schedule. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel like they have a chance to, to still win 10 or 11 games. That's interesting. Cause yeah, it's not the schedule. It's not the schedule that you look and say, oh, well, yeah, they, they have three losable games in the non-conference, and that's why it's only eight. So, okay, well, that sounds good. That sounds like a good uh, a good number for you. Um, 
I'm going to take another shot. This is, I'm getting a little iffier now. And I thought actually I, BYU was going to have to replace somebody, but I think I was a bet short anyway. So I have enough room for now. You know what? I'm going to give you my quick bet that I actually feel decent about. That's a, that's a weird bet. It's one more reach before I get to my over-unders that I don't like as much. Looking at the teams again, the 10, that, that threshold on um, the site of teams that could, that'll win 10 games and trying to look for a number there that maybe has a little juice that makes it worth it. I landed on our guy, Billy Napier. Okay. And the idea of Florida, they're 12 to one to win 10 regular season games. And if I'm going to bet on Billy Napier and Anthony Richardson, they're going to lose to Georgia, but I don't think there's any other game that you say, well, they have no chance to compete in that. And that includes the Utah game to open the season. So it's a little rough Because all of a sudden, like, you know, you lose to Georgia, you lose to Utah, who's a top 10 team. And all of a sudden, like you're out of wiggle room and you got to win all the others. But as a flyer for 12 to one, there wasn't anybody else that I loved up, you know, sort of in double digit odds. So I'll bet 30 bucks on that to win 360. I I almost wish I think almost like 12 to one is probably not good enough odds when you when you have you you're playing in the SEC and you have Utah in the non-conference. But we just love Billy Napier on this podcast, so I'll bet them. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a big Billy Napier fan. I have a lot of faith in what he can do. Like you said, I, I'm just worried that he has two likely losses on the schedule with uh, with Georgia and then with Utah in the non-conference. Now, maybe they have a chance to beat Utah. It's certainly not a, a totally you know guaranteed loss. Then they also go to Texas A&M, which I don't love. I, I think that Texas A&M is only going to be fine, but but I think that they're probably just a little bit further along. But it, just for a flyer, just for 30 bucks, I, I don't hate it at all. I think that Florida is a lot more talented than people realize. And by the way, Anthony Richardson is going to be one of these guys that we are talking about at quarterback, I think, by the end of the year. Maybe more heading in to 2023, but uh, but if he fits well into this system. Or by the way, if uh, it's Jack Miller, right, who, who went over from Ohio State, I think that he's going to have a chance as well to potentially work into that conversation. So between those two guys, I expect them to have some answers at, at at, uh, at quarterback and by the end of the year I think it's going to be a really fun team I, I just don't know if by the beginning of the year when they play Utah they're going to quite be there all right how many bets do you have left Shahan? so I have I have three left so two two that I have written down and then uh how many do you have left I have three left so we'll take our last break and we'll come back with our final bets here in the college football survivor and make sure and save your uh, your controversial one for last oh don't worry I will we got to tease the folks we got to make everybody get all the way to the end so you, you people can't leave come back after this we'll be right back the college football survivor show where playoff survival is always on the line all right we're back Shahan what do you got next for us yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep it simple. You know, I I feel like uh, I feel like it's always weird for me to bring up this program because like I ha- I'm optimistic about them, but like I am so paranoid of people calling me a homer. But like Baylor just won 12 games last year, and their over under right now is uh to, or their their odds to win 10 games, which wouldn't even require them to do anything different than what they did last year, is plus 550. That's mm. insane to me. That's crazy. I I mean, look, there's absolutely a chance that Baylor wins nine and it's not that ridiculous, but plus 550? That that just seems like insane value to me when you look at Baylor's schedule. Now, they go to BYU. That's going to be really tough. And there are multiple losable games on the schedule. At Oklahoma, I think at Texas is going to be a tough game versus Kansas State versus Oklahoma State. Like, I'm not saying that there aren't losable games, but, you know, you in our in our spring sort of uh, look ahead at the at the season picked Baylor to potentially be a playoff team and win the Big 12. Uh, I'm not quite there, but I think that they don't have to, to to win 10 games. So for me, I'm putting down 100 on Baylor. That would get me 550. And, and again, I sometimes I look at Vegas and I'm just like, I'm clearly like, I'm sorry, did Dave Aranda take the Jets job? Like, am I missing something? I don't think I'm missing something. I think that uh, that people are just a little behind on Baylor. I was actually, I was going to take Oklahoma State at 300, to, uh, plus 300. And then I realized that Baylor had even worse odds. And I have more confidence in Baylor being that team that wins 10 games than Oklahoma State. It's one of those things, I think, when you have a program like Baylor. And, and I don't think, you don't want to call Baylor like an emerging program because they 
practically made the stinking playoff in 2014. But then they revamp, you know, they, it's the Dave Aranda version of Baylor's kind of an emerging program. And I think the thing becomes when you're trying to evaluate stuff like this, was the great year the year before the beginning of the new standard or was it a peak that they can't rise up to? And I do think there are programs where the fact that they were good the year before and then there are expectations for the following year lessens the chances of them actually succeeding. So Baylor is going to have different kinds of expectations now. So what does that mean? But I think 10 wins, right? I, I don't think they're going to go away. I don't think Dave Aranda football is going away. So, and even like Oklahoma State, you know, did to lose Jim Knowles as the defensive coordinator, right? It's like, okay, well, but Baylor, did Baylor, I mean, Baylor changed starting quarterbacks, but the guy that they picked and Gary Bohannon now left because they picked, picked Blake Shapin, like they think that's better. And so I don't know, is there anything that Baylor did last year that anyone would believe, oh, they can't do that again? I, I It doesn't feel like that would be the case, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's going to look a little different because they did lose, I, I think, their biggest stars and Jalen Petrie, who was a first team All-American and in Tyquan Thornton and Abram Smith. But what they lose in that, I think they make up for in having one of the best trench combos in the entire nation and certainly in the Big 12, right? I mean, they have four starters back on offense and they bring back every member of their two deep on the defensive line. And add, by the way, uh, Jackson player who's going to be a big time player on the interior for them. So I it's going to look different, right? Like it's not just necessarily plug and play. But, you know, look, I, I think that we obviously went through this a little bit with Iowa State two years ago where uh, they won a lot of close games and then it kind of regressed. You know, that, that could happen, right? That absolutely could happen. But. I think that Baylor's a more talented team. I think that they have a much clearer identity in terms of uh, roster ma management and roster building. Uh, and the fact that they are the strongest team in the trenches to me really helps insulate them from some of the issues that I think Iowa State had. So to me, I, again, I, I don't even think that this is a lock that they win the Big 12, right? Or even that they make the title game. But but winning 10 games, I think, is is perfectly manageable for them. All right. So Baylor to win 10 games at plus 550. Seems like a nice bet. All right. I'm, do you have any? I, I, I'm going to have one now, which is just slightly like a team that's not good being slightly better than awful. Right. That I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, are you I, I thought maybe you'd come in and have a Lance Leipold bet and say, oh, I, I really believe Kansas over two and a half wins is a sure thing. I actually was thinking about that. But uh, but I was like, man, if I go Baylor and Kansas State, am I really going to do a third Big 12 bet? So I decided not to. But I absolutely would smash that over on Kansas. Because, I mean, once you once you figure that, well, Kansas will beat Texas and then they only have to win two more games after that. Nice and easy. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I'm going to do it with Illinois okay. and I have a bit of a professional crush on Brett Bielema because I think he's just a pain in everybody's butt. And I kind of like that. And he conjured some wins out of nowhere last year at Illinois. And the talent is not where it needs to be yet. But I think I think he can conjure some stuff again. And so, you know, you look at Wyoming and Indiana and Chattanooga and Purdue and Northwestern and the over under is is four and a half. So I think you can see like three wins pretty darn easily, right? Not that Wyoming's a pushover, that Virginia's a pushover, you know, Chattanooga, that's probably the one win for sure. But I, I think they can jump up and bite somebody. I think sometimes you can look at a division like the Big Ten West and you look at it and think, ah, everybody there stinks. And then you can like dig into it and be like, well, I don't know. Everybody's kind of tough. It's like, no, it really is not that good of a division. So Illinois can go steal a couple wins here and there. And so it's it's not like a lot of football science here. It's it's kind of betting on Bielema and a team that I don't think anybody really thinks is close to being here yet. But I just think they could be a lot closer to six and six than two and ten. And they stole games last year, and I think they can do that again. So four and a half, like I don't love it. It's minus one ten. I'll win one hundred ninety bucks on it, but I'll put a hundred bucks on Illinois to win at least five games. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't hate that for sure. I think it's, I think that they are building an identity, and sometimes that's just the biggest thing in football, right? Is is understanding what you want your team to do fundamentally, and so I, I think that there could be some value there. I'm probably a little less optimistic than you about uh, about where they're going to be, but um, you know, I, I think that is certainly worth a gamble, and and uh, they showed some real flashes, I think, for the first time in a while in year one. And so now I think, uh, you know, if they could capitalize on some of that, that would be great. All right. Next bet for you. Yeah, I so the bet that I was going to make is is Utah over nine. Nine seems like a crazy low number for a team that we think could be in the college football playoff conversation. Uh, it's a little bit of a boring bet, to be honest. Like it just feels very, <laughs> very similar sort of a uh, mode to like Houston a couple picks ago. So I'm really trying to find one of those types of uh, I'm really trying to find one of those types of like way under the radar type things. Um, but you know, I I think that uh, I think that may be one that I'll consider. So so I'll, I'll put Utah to the side because I think that that's just kind of boring right now. I think Duke might be really bad this year. I, I mm. think that Duke might have a chance to be really, really bad this year. Not because I don't believe in their new coaching staff. Uh, they bring in Mike Elko as defensive coordinator from Texas A&M, but like they go to Northwestern and to Kansas in the non-conference slate, and like those might both be losses depending on what Kansas is up to and their over under is three and a half. So if they lose those two games, just hypothetically, I mean, they kind of find two on the schedule somewhere, right? That that seems really tough. I don't know. I don't know who in the ACC they can beat because they go to Georgia Tech. That's maybe the one that you'd feel good about. But like here, I'll just read off all their games. Who are they beating? Versus Virginia versus North Carolina at Miami at Boston College versus Virginia Tech at Pitt versus Wake. Who are they beating? I, I don't think they're beating anybody. No, yeah, no. We. I mean, I I thought the talent level in the ACC this year is pretty high. Yeah. And again, sometimes you can, I mean, again, in the past, I may have said things like, oh, the ACC, that stinks. But like, that's, that's not true. Like they have some really interesting teams, interesting coaches, interesting quarterbacks. And if you don't have that, and also the one thing is like, they don't have to be good. Not that they're going to try to lose, but like they have a first year coach, they're Duke. Like I was actually, I just took my daughter on a college tour and we went by Duke the whole, my God, they have so many Coach K t-shirts still left over there. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. My my wife went to to grad school there, and it is I love it over there. But also, like, uh, you know, it's probably a lot more fun if you're a basketball player. But I think they overbought on the Coach K <laughs> commemorative t-shirts. I think they're going to be on the clearance rack soon <laughs> because at some point you got to make room for the John Shire t-shirt. So, uh, like, yeah, I'm sure they'll be selling a lot of those. <laughs> The, the John Shire glasses, that's what they'll be selling next. <laughs> They're also not selling any Mike Elko t-shirts. So, like, <laughs> if they go 1-11, and 11, like, it's okay. He can yeah. build something there. He can play young guys. He can try stuff. Again, not that he's trying to lose, but there's no pressure on them. And so, you know, Brett Bielabo was making stuff up as he went last year. He was playing 14 offensive linemen at a time. It was great hiding the ball under the fullback shirt, you know, like he was do like, I don't think Duke has to do that. Cause like they, they have time. They're going to yeah. figure it out. So yeah. that feels like then leads you to an under. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where I'm going. The odds aren't very good on it. It's minus minus one sixty on those, but uh, you know, I, I still think it's worth putting some money down. And uh, I mean, up until this, uh, th this final one, I haven't put down a, uh, an under as yet. So I think, I think it's just going to take some time. And, and I also just think that, Northwestern is not going to be as bad as they were last year, in my opinion. And Kansas, I think, has a chance to move forward just a little bit. And so this is like a potentially program defining type win for Kansas in week four, whereas this is just like a game to Duke. Like, it's no big deal. So uh, I, I think that there's going to be a motivation gap there when Kansas uh, hosts Duke on September 24th. OK, I have two more bets left. I was in love with Ole Miss last year. I'm going to stick with Ole Miss. They won 10 games. Last year, um, the over under for them, and that was uh, that was 10 in the regular season because they lost their bowl game. So they were 10 and two in the regular season. The over under seven and a half. Jackson Dart at quarterback, I think they'll get pretty good quarterback play. And again, you start 
going through the schedule and there's a bunch of, I don't know, they could beat LSU. You know, they could beat Auburn. They could beat Texas A&M. I don't think you automatically look at all those games and say, nope, they'll lose, they'll lose, they'll lose, they'll lose. And so seven and a half, I think, seems doable. I don't think they'll be sort of at the edge of the playoff mix the way they were last year. But eight and four is good enough, and I'll believe in Lane Kiffin and throw a hundred bucks on over seven and a half at minus one forty to win one hundred seventy one bucks, and I and I feel okay about that one. Yeah, I mean, I looked at that line and didn't know if I loved it, I, or or uh, I kind of thought about Ole Miss and felt like they might be a little disappointing this year. But I mean, look, the reality is the line seven and a half. And they're spotted five games. <laughs> I mean, realistically, Troy, Central Arkansas at Georgia Tech, Tulsa at Vanderbilt. Those are five wins that are basically locks. And that's all in the first half of the season, by the way. So then you get versus Kentucky. I think that's going to be a big game versus Auburn. I think that's a win personally. It's going to be tough in the second half of the season because they could legitimately like it wouldn't be a huge shock if they lost basically from LSE one. Like it wouldn't be a huge shock, but I think that I trust Ole Miss enough. I think that Lane Kiffin is a good enough coach that they're going to win one or two of those 50-50 games. I I think the Egg Bowl is going to be a huge game for them uh, against Mississippi State. They get it at home this year. So I think that they can probably make it to eight. Um, It'll probably be sweating at the end, you know, when, when it's that they have to win one of Arkansas or Mississippi State. But I think that they do get there. It is one of those when I looked at it, you start going through the schedule and like I got and I was like, I think they might start six and oh. Yeah. And then it was like, <laughs> oh, but then I think they might finish oh and six. So um, it's it's a belief in, you know, if they don't start five and one or six and oh, my seven and a half is going to be in trouble because they get everybody in the second half of the year. And so, um, again, I, I might be on the edge of my seat with this one. I don't think I'll be cashing this one in early November, but I'll take the shot with Lane. All right. So how many bets do you have left? I just have one. All right. Drop it on us. You first. Texas over. Texas under. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The, the number is nine. That's a big number. That's a big number. When I looked at Texas's schedule, but haven't they won nine games basically every year in the last two decades, right? Isn't that right? Um, what well, you what look, sport are we right. talking about? I know, I know. It's not basketball. Uh, <laughs> these are eight winnable games for Texas. Louisiana Monroe, UTSA, and a, you can dispute that in a moment. Uh, Texas Tech, West Virginia, Iowa State, Kansas State, TCU, and Kansas. And then you have, so if that's, if they win those eight, now I'm not saying they are slam dunk going to win all those eight, but there are eight games that they probably should be favored in all those. Again, this is the team that you go to the sites. They're favored to win the big 12. So I think they're favored to win those eight games. And then they have Bama, Oklahoma state, Oklahoma and Baylor. So they, can they win one of those four games to get to nine or could they win two of those four games to get to 10 and the over? I don't love it. I might have done it to troll you. I might have wasted 100 fake dollars just to like listen to your reaction to it. But I don't not believe is this the I don't not believe in it. So um, I think if they come out like if they give Bama, if they hang with Bama at all in week two, I'm going to feel pretty decent about the chances here because then that's one loss. And then, okay. Can they beat two of three of Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and Baylor and get the 10 and two? But I like that we're going head to head. Are you like, how do you love this under? Do you, are you like betting your fake? You have a real house, but are you betting your fake house on it? I mean, the thing that I love about it is that I think best case scenario they're pushing, like best case scenario. There is no way, in my opinion, that they get to 10. Like, do you know the last time that they won 10 regular season games? 1936. No, I don't know. <laughs> That's actually, I, well, that does bring me to the, the fact that Steve Sarkeesian had the f- worst first year record for a head coach since 1937, but that's not what I was getting at there. Uh, no, it was uh, when some guy, uh, I don't know if you've heard of him, Colt McCoy was on campus mm, in 2009. Yeah. Uh, pre, uh, pre-shoulder injury, they did win 10 games in 2018, but it's because they won a bowl game after going 9-4 and four in the regular season. So it has not happened in a while. I, I think they're going to be better, right? Like, I think they're going to win eight games and look pretty good while doing it. And I think that they'll be competitive in the games that they lose. But, like, ten games? That's that's a lot of games. That's a lot of freaking games to try and win. And 
the thing with me too is like you don't even get that good value on it right because like you know on FanDuel they have the odds of them winning 10 games you only get plus 160 on that and like we talked about Oklahoma State you get plus 300 Baylor you get plus 550 like that's insane to me that that makes no sense whatsoever and this isn't even me like saying that it's going to go badly like I I don't think it's going to go badly I think they'll be fine but it's just you mentioned those games, right? So, so the games that are so they're a lock to lose to Alabama, even if it's competitive. Like being competitive would be a huge victory for them, like it was when they played LSU back in 2019. I, I will say when we when we get to week two, I am hammering the Texas will be competitive against Alabama. However, you bet that I don't know what that means. I'll I'll make but, sure yeah. and uh, and remember it. <laughs> but it's uh, you know, I mean, maybe maybe if they're allowed to like add points for how many recruiting points they have in their 2023 mm. class then like maybe they can only lose by a lot i don't know but uh you know they they get oklahoma in in red river obviously that's always a tough game they go to kansas state which is not a place that they've had a lot of success lately and like we talked about i think kansas state has a chance to be pretty good they're at oklahoma state if they got them at home i'd feel a little bit better but like oklahoma state is just one of those teams that's just so much better at home than they are playing anywhere else uh, you know, you get Baylor at home in the last week of the season. Maybe you've got things together by then. But like, man, even even playing at Tech is like a game that could just be like an explosion of something happening in Lubbock. And like, you know, they're going to beat UTSA. I think that it's very comparable to their game against Louisiana last year. But like, there's just... I don't know. Iowa State and TCU aren't games that I think are locks either. Like if you're if you're asking me which games I feel like are relative locks that Texas wins, ULM, UTSA, West Virginia, at Kansas. I like you making the case for Texas to go two and seven in the Big Twelve. This is <laughs> we have gone seven. from we have gone from will they win nine regular season games to you're like I just don't see a third Big Twelve no, win. No, no, for no, them. no. So, so I think that they have four games that I would consider. And I'll, I'll throw in Iowa State since it's at home, right? So I think that they have five games that they are going to be heavily favored in, right? And then they have a few more games that I think that they'll be favored in. But like, uh, in fact, they'll, they'll be favored in most of their schedule, I'd say, other than I think, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens against Alabama and how bad it is. But it's just to get to 10 regular season games. Like, here's the other thing, too, is if you're going to the nice thing about nine uh, and the over under is that you obviously get the uh, the push factor. And I think that that's probably the best bet is that you just don't lose your money. I mean, yeah. if you want I, if you want real value, like you might as well go all the way and, and bet on them to win 10, which is still only plus 160. That's not even very good value. I, I, I feel nine's too high. It, I think it feels like it should be really eight and a half. I should win on nine. Right. Because it's even like, well, what if Quinn Ewers is one of the five best quarterbacks in the country? It's like, well, does he play linebacker? They might go nine and three. Does he play defensive end? <laughs> that might lift them to nine. Like if he's not, if he looks like he's not ready just because he's young and he should have been in high school last year, they're going to go six and six. So like this is feels like a very youth movement type year where like by the end of the year, we're like, oh, yeah, these guys are fun and they're going to be back. And like that's like usually if you kind of have that in your head, that's a nine and three team. But like they also play Alabama. So that's why for me, they're an eight and four right. team. Yeah, no, I think uh, the the public money on them is off right now because <laughs> they're Texas, because of Quinn Ewers, because they're back, of course. Yeah. So I, that's that's the hard part here, and again, that it's coming off a five and seven season, starting a freshman quarterback. Their line, their over under is nine. Like they're supposed to win four more games yeah. to push with a freshman quarterback. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm probably crazy. <laughs> but man, if I win, you're never going to hear the end of it. Oh my god. So, so Steve Sarkeesian has, uh, has coached for seven full seasons, not counting obviously the season that uh, that he got let go at USC. Out of those seven seasons between Washington, USC, and Texas, th- by the way, three fantastic programs that have won a lot of games over the years. Uh. Do you know how many times he has lost fewer than four games in a season? Uh, six. 
he has never lost fewer never. than four games in a season. Can I, he has can I switch always to lost at least four games. Now, not all. I mean, I want to be clear. This is not all like Steve Sarkeesian's fault. It's all context. It's all part of a bigger thing. And he had good teams for sure, at uh, especially at USC. But like, he, I mean, last but year. We're not talking about <laughs> context and good teams. We're talking about can they get the nine wins and win Dougie Boy some money? And you're telling me he's never done it. He's he's never done it. Um. You know, and like the thing is, right, like there comes a place where it's like you lost five games, I think, last year. Maybe it might have been six that they led at halftime and they fell apart in the second half. And like when you're losing games like that a lot, you wonder if there's something fundamentally up, right? Like fundamentally wrong with what you're trying to do with the strategy that you're trying to employ. Now, Steve Sarkeesian is a very smart man who's forgotten more about football than we'll ever know. But At the same time, it's like, does he have the sort of foresight to to kind of deal with some of the issues that they dealt with last year? I I think that's going to be a huge question for them. Just a reminder, everybody, this is fake money that I am willing to lose just to aggravate Shahan. Don't (laughs) listen to me on Texas on this, okay? Shahan (laughs) is making very compelling points. Sometimes you just say things on a podcast to get through the podcast. So I'm if I had another bet to make, I might make it. But for a hundred fake dollars, I will take the one percent chance that I'm right and Shahan's wrong. So I have something to talk about on this pod in December. Those are our bets. We will write them down. And we will revisit them at the end of the year and tell you how much money we might have won or might have lost. What's your favorite bet, Shahan, that you made? The one that you feel best about? I I really like my Coastal Carolina bet, to be honest. I think that that is just... I. Again, I, I'm missing something like that. I know that it's because, uh, you know, these lines are made to get money going a certain direction. But like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And, and probably the other one that I like best, because because I think that's my favorite one that I think I have a chance to win. I think that the best bet that I'm making, though, is Will Anderson for Heisman. I think the value that you're getting on that, it's going to be the prevailing narrative this year, in my opinion. It, it is going to be let's get a defensive player, the Heisman Trophy. And it's going to be like such a dominant Alabama year that we're literally going to be able to sit here and talk about, well, you know, they got eight players who could win the Heisman. Which one do we want? And the answer is going to be Will Anderson, I think. Yeah, that's the Jackson Smith and Jigman, Will Anderson for the Heisman. And then I just believe in Clemson. Yeah. Clemson over 10 and a half, I think is a pretty solid bet for me. So, okay, that's that podcast. We are starting to get into time where, okay, it's going to be time to preview stuff. You guys can go back and listen to our Apple podcast for Apple podcast subscribers this week where Shahan and I listed 10 things that are driving us crazy about college football at the moment. We also eventually will do 10 things we love about college football because we like the game. The stuff around it can sometimes make you a little nuts. So go back and listen to that. It's $2.99 a month to subscribe to Apple podcast for the whole month. You get four of those mostly every month. For now, make sure you're reading Shahan at CBSSports.com. For Shahan J. Haraja, I'm Doug Maurice, and that was the College Football Survivor Show. The College Football Survivor Show, where playoff survival is always on the line.